Now then, octopus, cuttlefish and squid all have the capability of changing their skin colour to match their surroundings. Well, now scientists in America have actually produced a material that mimics the camouflage abilities of an octopus. Uh, the finding has some pretty big implications in both the military and commercial world. So what exactly is all this? Well, let's have a look. The material is three layers thick. It's actually paper thin, very flexible as well, just like the skin of an octopus. It's made up of a grid of cells which can sense light. The sensors then switch a black pigment on or off in a matter of seconds. Now, it currently only works in black and white, but scientists are hoping to add other colours to the mix in due course. The research itself has been funded by the US Navy. There's also, though, been interest from the world of fashion, and we can prove it to you as well, because with me now is our science correspondent, Jonathan Webb, and Lauren Bowker, who is a materials alchemist. We'll get into that in a moment, Lauren. Uh, but Jonathan, first of all, we've seen this is a sort of uh, essence as to how this is meant to work, but making that, that switch from white to black or black to white, just to explain that to us. Yeah, so the three layers that you mentioned are inside each one of those tiny cells. They're all a millimetre across. And inside each one, the top layer contains the colour, the black or white. The middle one has a switch which effectively can turn that pigment on or off. And then the bottom one actually contains sensors that read out the light levels underneath the fabric so that it can copy in each one millimetre position exactly what's happening underneath and effectively disguise itself. So we're gonna, we can just see on the screen here what uh, the way it changes. I mean, it's pretty thorough too, isn't it? It's not, there's nothing half-hearted about that. How long is it going to take, though, to go from black and white to magical colour? Yeah, that's a very good question. So that will obviously take uh, another good few years of research, but that sort of technology is around. And if we look at what we have in flat screen monitors, mm -hmm. the way each individual pixel can contain three different potential colours, all we need to do effectively is build those different sort of sub-pixels inside each one of those uh, cells that are already within the fabric at the moment. Okay, let me bring Lauren in here. Well, you were seeing it working there, yeah, Lauren. Yeah. And I know you've got a black box here uh, with your one or two examples you can show yeah. us already. First of all, materials alchemist. Yep. What's that then? Uh, it kind of came about from a dub, really. I think um, my background's in chemistry and then I moved over to fashion and to textiles and studied at the Royal College. And I literally fused chemistry, a lot of the sort of chromic pigments that these guys are using, I'll work with and I'll take that from a design angle and put it and merge it into materials. Right, well, you must be in your element about this, uh, this yeah, camouflage I mean, I mean, or anti-camouflage I'm in my element, but I've, it's, you know, I... I understand, I understand the technology behind it. Um, I'm more interested in where the application is going to go and how it's going to be used and mass marketed. Well, or, yeah, well, so are we. I mean, in terms of fashion, yeah. what do you see its potential? Um, I mean, colour change as a sort of language around any you know, parameter is interesting, I think. When it, for me, it gets more interesting when you start to use it for purpose rather than purely aesthetic. I mean, we can make dresses and T-shirts and hypercolour, which is what we discussed before, which changed in the environment anyway now. I think the nice thing about this is that it's digitally controlled or it's, you know, it's able to start to pattern like an LCD t uh, TV but through the fabric and but do you see there being more than you said purpose rather than aesthetics you can Absolutely. see a purpose yeah, from a fashion yeah, of perspective course. I mean wearable technology is huge um, it just takes a designer to make it even bigger I think a lot of the stuff right now is quite plastic quite engineered um, and if we start to think about how we could use this type of technology in a watch face to perhaps detect things like asthma attacks or sort of different uh, medical conditions of the human or to sense unseen parameters in the environment, you're going to have a much more useful fabric and, and hopefully something that can change the world rather than just fast fashion. Well, that, which that, would is be, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? You're halfway there, though, aren't you? I mean, you've got your well, black box here and some feathers. First of all, put, just show us what yeah, you can I mean, do with one of the feathers. Us, this was a, a technology we created which tracks aerodynamic, um, and we use the feather purely for a sort of aesthetic reason to show the sort of surfaces we can get it into. So as I blow across it, the feather just changes colour through different phases. So it's a whirl. So you see you get this sort of um, colour fluctuation oh, wow. across the surface, right. um, of which we uh, created some sculptures and, and uh, wearable leather garments at London Fashion Week last season, um, which we worked with our tailors and our cutters. And not just on a feather, because you've no, got material there, the so leather, that could be, that yeah. could be a, this could be a dress, could it? For well, it is. So we created surfaces which will respond um, to literally aerodynamic pattern across the body. So dependent on the cut of the design and dependent on the way that we impregnate this, um, this dye, this ink, you get different fluctuations which reveal the unseen aerodynamic around the human. So originally we did it for a car, car sort of, can't well, say what, but okay, <laughs> a thing in which I mean, it's nice to know there are aesthetics and fashion opportunities, yeah. but Jonathan, we can't help but notice that it's the US Navy that uh, mm -hmm. put, put the money in here. So the military objective is clearly an important one. How, how, how would they use it as camouflage material? Yeah. 
Very much so. That would be, be the vision. As an octopus. Yeah, to hide itself like an octopus does. Although some of those animals that you mentioned, like cuttlefish, actually use the uh, the changing colours to attract attention and not just to hide. But obviously, the military is generally much more interested in concealing things. So um, even uh, when it's not quite as flexible as some of these amazing materials, the sort of thing that these scientists have designed could potentially be used to cover a vehicle, for example, and very much use it to uh, sort of mimic whatever pattern of light and shade is behind, so that it's much less visible from a distance. Can't wait for the colour version. Yeah. Jonathan, Lauren, thank you both very thank much you. indeed. Thanks a lot. Well, thanks for being with us here on BBC World News and still to come on Impact.